What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fun with Dumb. We had quite an eventful past weekend. As you can see, I'm joined by my guest co host today, Rex Dizzy. <laughs> you applaud yourself like shit. <laughs> Been a while. I don't know how I to do it. I was like, this. oh, okay, we're doing this now. <laughs> uh, Rex Dizzy, thanks for joining us. Uh, yeah. It's been a while, man. Yeah, during Cry Later, you guys are um, celebrating three years of Fun with Dumb. And I didn't get a shout out. Everyone got a shout out but me. So I was like, I have to come I, back. I, I felt that. Assert bad. my uh, presence. I know, because you, you've been a big part of the fun with them. Journey. Been a huge part. I, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Relax, bro. <laughs> yes, I know. And I, I, I should have thanked you. Uh, and, nah, it's, it's all good. Uh, I'm thanking you right now. Right. Um, Thank uh, this, you. Obviously, I don't usually do the podcast today, but we have a very special guest. Um, and before we get into it, I just want to also say thank you to everybody who came out to the Cry Later event. We were celebrating the three-year anniversary of Fun With Them, the podcast, as well as Steffi's birthday and mm. Bobby Lee's 50th birthday as well. Wow. So oh, it was his 50th it was his birthday? His 50th Damn. birthday. That, he doesn't look like like he's 50 or any age. He's just like an ageless yeah. creature. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't clone clip that for Bobby. He's going <laughs> to roast me. But, but you know what I'm saying? He's yeah, just yeah. like this timeless wow. kind of character. Yeah. Um, Almost like a folk folklore. <laughs> yeah, he's a folklore. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But... Um, so let me just intro this. <laughs> let me intro this guest real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Someone in the comments is that is that Steven Yen? <laughs> okay, here. Let me Obviously. let me let me just uh, let me say we've had this guest before on my show, but last night me and Rec we left Steffi stream early to catch the last show at um, the theater in downtown to mm. watch this movie Blue Bayou and. Um, after the movie, I got blue by you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. A after the movie, we, uh, me and Rec, we looked at each other. It was like, you did it. Yeah. You really <laughs> the did son it. Son of a bitch did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and we always have the react, like, that's our reaction to any movie that we think is good or trash. Like, we have an instant reaction. We look at each other over yeah. the, the credits run. We look at each other and we either high five and be like, or we do psh, yeah, or like, some uh, something, uh, yeah. but we just looked at each other like, son of a bitch did it's it. fucking amazing. I was and, holding, yeah. And who we're talking about right now is writer, director, and actor Justin Chan. What's up, Justin? Hey. Let's go. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Hell yeah. How are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. You know, just, just uh, came to LA to promote the film and uh just like loving all the the love you know you you were at the after party of the the premiere and i was and it was cool because um you know it's you know you know it kind of feels weird when you like try to invite people to your thing so like i invited like some people but but uh it seemed like you know I, most of the people they just showed up no the, yes. the community showed up for that one bro yeah, yeah so you like, didn't you didn't invite him though. no no he did, he, did. he did he called he <laughs> He texted me Damn. directly, bro. That's what he meant. It was like, oh, some people no, just showed up. I don't want to flex, but he texted me directly, and I appreciated mm. it. I couldn't make it out to the movie, but I went to the um, after party after, and you, you saw everyone was like, they're like, we all cried. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, y'all all cried? <laughs> Not one person who didn't yeah. cry? I mean, we, I, I cried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was, I, I was there. Depressed. I was there. That is like. Okay, but you didn't I, cry. You didn't cry. No, I, I was going into it. I was, you know, I, you have, I have a hard time crying. You know that. <laughs> I have a hard time crying. I said, I said weird things. I was, remember at the end, I was like, yeah, it really knows how to jerk your tears. I was, yeah. You were like, <laughs> <laughs> Rec was like, that's something that people who don't cry say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's time you said that. But, yeah, oh, yeah. Shit. Um, but. Yeah, we loved it. We're not going to obviously spoil it, but why don't you just give us a general gist of a synopsis of what this movie's about? Yeah, it's about uh, this guy, Antonio LeBlanc. He's uh, from Louisiana, and he uh, has a you know new family. He's about to have a daughter, and, and um, he's obviously a Korean-American adoptee, and uh, he's about to... Uh, you know, start this family and gets an altercation with his stepkid who is white. Uh, stepkid's dad and the stepkid's dad's a cop and they get into this altercation and then he gets arrested <clears throat> and then uh, finds out that he was never a citizen. Uh, mm. Coming to this, you know, being adopted from, from Korea was never a citizen. So the film is about him trying to keep his family together and trying to stay in the country and uh, a lot of introspection about you know where he came from, where he's going, um, you know why why he's even here, and, and right. 
and you know what it means to like be a father and all that yeah and this is like a story that we've heard kind of in the last couple of years of like real life people coming out about this yeah. stuff about all of a sudden getting deported to a country yeah, yeah. that they are not familiar with <laughs> yeah yeah it's like yeah. go back to the country and they're like I, like what am i supposed to do with it i don't speak the language i don't know yeah. anybody yeah yeah and it's crazy because <clears throat> um you know this is happening to like every sort of ethnicity you know it's we we always think about uh uh you know immigration policy having to do with the the mexican border yeah and but this is different because these people are adopted right, right. by u.s citizens and like the, the government acknowledged these adoptions and there were children that were brought from different countries money was exchanged right you know so it's crazy you know for, for to like wait like 30 years you know and then all of a sudden decide like someone's not a citizen when they were adopted by u.s citizens and they they had no say in when they you know in coming even and um, in the case of Antonio, as with a lot of these cases, um, he went through like the foster care system. Like his adopted parents didn't want him. He went through foster care system, and when that's the case, there's no way the adopted parents went through the whole process of you know making sure they get naturalized because it you know costs money and, right. and lawyers need to be involved. Like so, they don't even know. You know, Wait, how how does that how does that happen? How do you get adopted without figuring out the citizenship part? Is that so? You know, a lot of these because there is a Child Citizenship Act of two thousand uh -huh. that 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 was passed that that automatically granted citizenship to anyone who was adopted after the year two thousand. Okay, but it's not retroactive. So mm, like we're talking crazy. about yeah, so we're talking about a lot of the people right now is from the seventies, eighties, and nineties. And it was just a different time. So, like, you think, you you know, and a lot of these parents didn't even know. So, like, uh, kids getting adopted, you would think if you're U.S. citizens, right. that automatically makes your kid a citizen because you adopted them. Right. But, um, so that's why, you know, and uh, some of these people, there, there's a lot of different ways people find out, like, you could go apply for a passport and then you the, they ran, run your background yeah. check and they're like, oh, you're not a citizen. Or people applying for government jobs. And they do a background check, and they're like, "You're not a citizen." So there's a lot of different ways. Yeah, but unless you're hit with that, you don't know. So there's, a, you know, even right now, there's tons of people that that I'm sure do not even know that they're they're undocumented. Yeah. I have a, you know, I have a pastor, uh, Sam Tomzik, that that was like my pastor going to church, and like he has two kids that are adopted. One of them is from Korea, one's from China, um, and he told me when he adopted, he had to go check. He like was paranoid. He went and checked three times to make sure oh, wow. that it was all taken care of. But like, not every parent's gonna be that diligent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Can you just imagine the situation when you are deported or something, and you're in that country? That must be pretty terrifying, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. for that, for your character in general, like he's a full on Southern Louisiana cat. <laughs> yeah. He didn't grow up on Yusung Jun. No, he didn't know Yusung Jun. <laughs> no deuce, you know, Kim no Jun. No, yeah. yeah. I just no, imagine that because I think just towards the end of the movie, just fe feeling like, yeah, I'm just what, like, just if that continued, just seeing this character in that environment, like yeah. that alone, I was like interested in too, like what that would be like. Yeah. But that's, you know, I did that on purpose so that like these characters stay with you. Yeah. And mm. they live on mm. because I think that's the most effective way to get people to like, do something about something because they go these characters become so real to them right you know that they go they can't go to you know sleep at night and be like you know they think like oh, i wonder what happened to antonio mm. i wonder what happened to jesse the daughter you know um so hopefully it's powerful enough where you know people share it and like the right people see it and it could get to legislators and because we all know like legislation it's all about exposure Mm. Like it's like about uh, what's in front of them or what people are making noise about. Right. If it's not pressing, nothing's going to be done about it. Right. You know. And I there there is a new bill. Uh, you know, the Citizenship Act of 2021 that they're trying to right now trying to push through. Yeah. So this film is like uh, it can help bring awareness and get the right people to to maybe change their minds. You know, yeah. in Congress and all that stuff. Dude, I'm not like I'm a dummy when it comes to politics. But what I do know, what what I I'm good at is telling human stories, and what I do know is this is such an effective way to 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 you know through people's hearts and like right. uh, to get people to change their minds, you know. Damn. Yeah. I mean, dude, I, I your your projects just last three projects: Gook, Miss Purple, this one, heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about that. We're like, you know, is it is it 
does it take a toll on you too in a sense just the stories being that heavy in <clears throat> itself yeah because um it's just it's just uh, filmmaking itself is tiring right but you know i have two purposes in filmmaking you know one is to bring empathy to asian americans and this falls within that because you know the adoptee experience is very much a part of the asian american experience mm. and the other part of why i make films is to show how we can coexist in this country right you know so you see my films like gook is just as much an african-american story as it is a, a korean american story and miss purple is just as much like that is that whole chicano storyline right. but it does take a toll because you know and especially this story like dude i'm not an adoptee i don't know what it feels like to to grow up with that experience so it's uh you know it was pretty sort of uh scary and stressful like there's a lot of times where i thought like you know maybe i shouldn't tell the story mm. but like um trying to do that community and their their narrative justice and making sure that that i even get an iota of authenticity with their experience in this country that's like a lot of responsibility yeah you know but like the the, the biggest thing is like i'm like well who is telling these people's stories right it's not happening so i'm like shit like i got the platform i got the i know i have know-how do we want to wait another five years yeah do we want to wait another 10 years like i'll i'll just do it you know but um and the other thing is like not everybody's gonna be happy yeah, yeah. not everybody like even gook man i got like korean i just she's calling me being like why'd you name it gook you know uh, <laughs> yeah. i did yeah, dude. you know because it's like yeah gook is one of those like throwback racist terms yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so young people are like huh, what yeah. <laughs> old people are like yeah we've heard that one yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah no I, I get it you know i know how these things go man and uh, I, I did appreciate that this story was there because it's so weird walking i think it, it, we're so not used to that going into a theater and you just see this korean adoptee story yeah, yeah. It was like so weird to me and then uh, you add these elements of louisiana and all that and you got this lead who's a legit actress it's like it's just yeah. the whole packaging of it is so interesting to me and it's like really only to now we can see that those kind yeah. of things which is crazy i mean we're you know we growing up around like asians and like we don't really even see that kind of asian a lot like yeah like really getting intimate with them and getting to know their stories so, like, well that that was part of it was like mm -hmm. dude we exist all over this country yeah, exactly. you know, yeah. and like it shouldn't be a novelty when you see an Asian American with like a Southern accent because we're there. True, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So it's like it, that's what the part of it is is just putting it in front of people and then normalizing it. That's right. why if you you know you you all saw it like the first scene is just him and his white stepdaughter, and I don't cut away. I just right. stay on it, mm -hmm. and I'm like deal with it. Right. deal with it and right. then and then and then you watch this thing and the, the, it's all novel you see this dude tatted up and stuff but then you know because i make everyone deal with it five ten minutes into it you're not even thinking about that stuff anymore you're just watching a man be like a, a, a family man right you know and that and that's what we need more of is to normalize this stuff so that we don't become like this fucking you know like um exotic sort mm. of you know uh deal point in a in a in a story you know it yeah. just becomes very much the fabric of 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 storytelling in this country you know uh speaking i mean that's one of the most striking things like right from this jump like just the acts and everything like how like how did you prepare for that um yeah, I, I'm, I'm terrible at accents yeah. <laughs> me too me too that shit. i'm really bad at accents i got a dialect coach mm. Mm. and then i uh i um modeled it after three specific people Dude, you know, a Southern accent is really hard to do well because if you don't do it right, it, it, it looks like a really bad, like, sketch, right. you know, right. kind of portrayal. So, like, the specificity of it was so important because it's got to feel real. And it's yeah. scary because, you know, I will say this, you know, some people, like, a lot of people told me not to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were like, dude, you know, and also, you know, some people from Louisiana were like, you know, we get they they're so used to people doing it bad. Right. That I get it. Yeah. They that have some trouble. Yeah. That can come yeah. off real offensive. I get yeah. it too. I, I played this game called Red Dead Redemption. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing a southern accent for like a month and he kept telling me to stop. <laughs> 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 it felt like real life to me. Um I mean I, I a southern accent's the one that I I feel like everyone thinks they can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Out of all of them. 
Do do a little Blue Bayou audition real quick. Come no, <laughs> absolutely not. Yes, yes, sir. The name's Antonio. <laughs> my baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> my, my baby girl. <laughs> no, um, uh, it was it was it had a nice long, little subtlety to it. it yeah, good, how it long good. did did it take you to feel like where you felt comfortable doing it? You know, even right before we started shooting, I started freaking out. Mm. You know, I was like, oh, shit, maybe I should, like, drop it. Like, I started, like, getting, like, freaking super, out. Yeah, super, yeah. like, paranoid. So I was like, you know, we were about right about to shoot, and, and I, had, I had all this anxiety. I was like, you know what? I sh Dude, this is not – I shouldn't do this, blah, blah, blah. But, uh, you know, I talked to my dialect coach, and she was like, snap out of it. Like, she's like, wow. snap out of it. You've been working. You, you have this. But it's it's scary putting yourself out that like is that. Scary. The yeah. accent yeah. stuff is scary. Yeah. yeah. Did you do a little bit of like method acting and like. I had to stay in it. Yeah. yeah. I had to stay in it the whole time because you know I was also directing this thing. So like. Oh God. I can't for me to step in and out of it. It'd be too much to think about, to try to. Pro so I just had to be in the accent. Wait. So as you were directing too, you were in the accent. So yeah. So like people <laughs> at first like. The first, <laughs> I, I could. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now, we're craft services. <laughs> now, now. Uh, the first few days, people were tripped out. They were like, you know, people were like laughing, you know, because I'd be like cut and then and staying in it. And people were just like, what is going on right now? You know, yeah. but, but uh, you know, after a few days, everybody got used to it. <laughs> that is that is <laughs> direct thing going with the accent. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, um, the little girl. Um, what's her name? Uh, Sydney Kowalski. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. She killed She definitely. That. Killed it harder than the little kid from Minari. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I gotta say. I told you yesterday, don't say that on the pod. Don't she, say that on the pod. She bodied him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shout out to Alan Kim. <laughs> I worked at the kid. I want to work yeah, in the- Yeah, y'all just did a music yeah, video. Yeah, I want to work in the industry still. I don't- Shit, work with her. You imagine getting blackballed by a kid in the industry? <laughs> He, he watches this, he's like, all right. And you see him pick up his phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Get God. Get that motherfucker on the line. <laughs> nah, nah. She was amazing, bro. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She was so confident in, yeah. like, the that attitude she had. It's just not like, oh, spunky, whatever. She was just, like, like <laughs> she's kind of yeah. scary a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. How, like, confident and aggressive she was. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, she was good. Yeah. I, I mean, mean we spent. Yeah. yeah. What's up? I mean, everybody the was The whole cast was yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. The wife, I mean, that's, you know, Alicia is an Academy Award winner, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you can't do any better than that. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I noticed you're really good with working with kids. Has, like, your experience with your daughter kind of helped you out there in that department? I mean, Gook, I didn't have my kid yet. So, you know, it has changed, though. You yeah. know, like, uh, with Sydney, uh, who's my daughter in Blue Bayou, um, just, it's time, though. You just need time. Right. Like I, I went up, she's from Atlanta. I went up and hung out with her and her family. And the important thing is like getting the parents involved just as much as a kid because mm. they're like, they know how to talk to their kid, mm. you know? So uh, making sure that like, you know, if we have a emotional day that the, the parents take them back to the hotel, decompress them, make sure they understand that this is not real life. Uh, but we rehearsed for, for a few weeks and, you know, it was just about setting up a sense of play. Like right. you can do no wrong, mm. so it's like just giving them the 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 the, the whole sort of like uh, latitude to do whatever they want, and then you slowly just rein them in to the what the script needs to be, but you make it feel like it's their idea. Right. You just mm. give suggestion. Hey, what about if you uh you know just said this here? Like let's just try that. But you don't give them like ten things at once. You give them like one thing at a time. Right. And then they slowly start to just come closer to to what you want over time. But you can't do it in a day. You know, the mistake is like you hire a kid and just show up and that's the first time you're meeting them and then you're like, all right, kid, do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's impossible. Especially in the accent. You're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the accent, you're like, kid. do your thing. And yeah. she's a child actor, right? Like she actually acts. She's done or... one project before. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just one. And how then, do you, yeah. How do you cast, like, what's that process like? You just got to see a lot of kids. Yeah. But like, and you just know, I mean, you have this intuition, you know, like what's going to... Okay, so the biggest thing about Sydney that I knew right off the bat was that she was a good listener. Mm. It wasn't about her talking. And when you look at the film, when she's not talking, she's not waiting for her next line. She's mm. actually just like taking it in and yeah, listening. Yeah, what pro actors do. Yeah. Right? yeah, and that was one of the, the indicators for me that I was like, okay, this kid's a one. But I saw like within five seconds of her tape, I was like, that's her. That's her. Bring, bring this girl in. 
and then we met and then you know the first audition was just some improv but i most a lot of it was just like hanging and then talking with her dad um and then i was like all right this is this is uh this is gonna work uh so then i went but like uh to atlanta but you know it's it's about like the other stuff not the mm. not the performing aspect you want to see if this kid is like a real person and then the rest of it you can kind of mold to where you need to go mm. yeah man yeah I, I gotta you know i'm going through my acting journey and trying yeah. to break, have my little breakthroughs as well and i went to your after party we talked about this before we went to your after party for blue bayou tons of asian actors like all emotional and they're feeling so i go into the bathroom and i see alex our producer here taking a piss and i'm just like and he saw the movie i didn't get to see the uh -huh. movie so i was like uh alex what did you think about the movie and he goes you should take some acting classes <laughs> and i fucking got furious like i was just like i didn't ask you that <laughs> i asked you how did you like the fucking movie <laughs> and he was like Sorry, that was a bad joke. That, that was a bad joke. <laughs> Did I, it make I, you more mad that he was holding his dick while he said that? Or <laughs> <laughs> I, I was a little tipsy too, but technically that's not the question I fucking asked you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think I had a right to be mad right there. Of course, yeah. it's like, Alex, put the camera on you first of all, because you look terrified too at the time, because you know I was mad. Uh, you know, in my defense, it's something that you've talked about before, so the right response would have been like, Oh, those acting classes that you talked about, like you should look back into those. Yeah, so but that's not my to... fucking question. <laughs> that's not my fucking question. It has nothing to do. Those are two different things. You could be like, oh, Justin's a fucking sick ass actor. You know, those acting classes you talked about, maybe you should take it. But you jumped right into, you should take some acting classes. <laughs> the fuck kind of Damn. review is that? It's like being on Rotten Tomatoes as a film critic and being like, oh, great movie. Y'all should take acting classes. <laughs> The fuck kind of shit was that? Uh, shit. <clears throat> you know I was furious, yeah. Alex, right? You know that, right? I know, I know. I apologize. That's pretty cold, Alex. Pretty cold. That, that's pretty cold, dude. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> you know, that's a moment you should uplift him, you know, but you just you just were like, <laughs> brought him right down. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was I, bad. How does it feel like, I, I noticed a lot of, like, dudes, grown men, saying, like, this is the first time I cried in a movie. Mm-hmm. Like, does it get a little tiring after you're like, all right, bro? Like, <laughs> no, you know, it, yeah. I mean, you know, um, at the end of the day, you know, yeah. I made this movie with a purpose in mind. You know, I'm trying to service all of us, mm. and for this film, I really am in service to the, to the adoptee community. I hope people understand that. Yeah, mm. dude, I want something to change, and I want to help. You know, and and that's the best way I can use my platform. You know, not everybody, not every movie. You know, I'm, you know, I'm planning to make tons of movies right but not every movie has to be an issue film but for this like that's the point is to get people to feel something right. so yeah. they can't walk away and just ignore ignore it so you know i mean when people are saying like oh it made me emotional i'm like i'm not like oh patting myself on the back i'm like good you should yeah because people are going through this shit you yeah. know and and maybe like the right people can see this and people can you know but it you know of course like if they're getting emotional i'm like okay it's working yeah and and this can maybe do something well and that's the thing i you know we've talked about how there's so many films right now in the asian community yeah we are talking about so many different issues and you kind of have to like get those out the way before we can move on to like dragons yeah. and wizards yeah, or yeah, whatnot yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying and i feel that it's like yes it's heavy it's like real shit. Yeah. but there's every community has done that where we've gotten those stories out the way we have to yeah you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and we got mad stories we still haven't told yet dude we're just starting yeah we're at like the tip of the iceberg man like this is just it says there's a taste of like the the plethora like you know we've been in this country for a long time if you include chinese people we've been here for a long time yeah and we're just getting to start telling our stories i mean there's so much to to say not enough time that's why i'm like that's why my output has been crazy because i'm like we got so many stories to tell yep. we're just like getting started this is like if we're doing this now in 10 years we're gonna be doing some gangster shit you yeah. know so like let's go like i mean i'm just like let's go yeah, I want to talk about that too. Like, it seems like, you know, you just finished the movie, it just came out, and you're already working on the next thing. Like, like yeah. how, you know, I, you, do you have any time to like decompress, like after every film? You know, like yeah, uh, or do you leave time to decompress? Is there like a 
period you're like okay so it's like mm -hmm. decompress two weeks and jump into another thing like do you think about that or how does that work to be honest the last five six years i've just gone straight yeah. you know i got you know after this i got i did you know the adaptation of pachinko the book yep. like i i did the television show for apple and and i did half of that season that's coming out in the new year that's crazy and then, yeah. you, you directed half of the season yeah wow and went then Korea for that right yeah i went to korea and vancouver yeah, yeah, for that yeah. and then i i just finished uh shooting a film like a few days ago with uh, rich brian right yep. and, and uh and so like i'm going man i'm going and and you know i'm 40 right now i just turned 40 in may and you know these next 10 years are like the when i actually have energy you know after like 50 like probably start slowing down a bit but like right now is a time you, you look know? good for 40 by the way <laughs> thank you i quit drinking good. in may is that what it is? Yeah. He's a little should. older than him. Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody on him, I dude? fucking hate this crew. <laughs> I fucking hate this crew. How, how regularly do I have to change up the producer seat and the co-host seat? See, really? that's, why he, that's like, why he didn't give you that shout out, man. Oh, uh, my no. God. It's all good. This I'm is back. ridiculous. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about that new joint that – because. Um, we just been seeing little teasers of like IG posts about mm -hmm. this. You guys, you were shooting in Hawaii for the past month or two. Yeah. Uh, with Rich Brian. Yeah. Uh, as a lead. Yeah. That, yeah. Can you spill anything about yeah. that? Or no, I can say all yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything about it. Like, uh, so you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm I've been friends with Sean since like yep. 19. Yep. I've known him forever. Uh, Sean is like the the the, the 88. head guy, yeah, head guy 88. Um, so we've been talking about doing a movie for Brian for a while. And, you know, there are some other iterations that, that, you know, I didn't care for, like with other people involved. And right. I was like, you know, I'm good on that. But finally they came back. They said, well, you know, let's just do what you want to do. What do you want to do? Yeah. And I was like, you know, I want to tell a father and son story. And uh, they're like, all right, you can do whatever. So I went off and I wrote this script uh, with a, a writing partner, Megan. And, and, um, and it's basically about a, you know, a father and son uh and and the son is just about to blow up as a rapper and his dad has been his manager his whole life like a dadager right mm. but he ju he just fired his dad and got a new white like manager legit in a sign with a new label and basically the story the gist of it, it, it it's like a breakup story between a father and son oh i like yeah. that and he's just trying to cut a new album in hawaii that's why it's in hawaii yeah but there's a reason why it's hawaii but but uh Basically, it's just another human story, and yeah. and man, like I so my last three films, <clears throat> you know, um, were Korean American centric. Blue Bayou has a whole Vietnamese storyline. Yeah. But now what I'm transitioning into is, you know, I I did our community, you know, some justice. But like, dude, I got this platform. I think that Southeast Asian stories are being like not represented properly. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I got to go do some Southeast Asian stories. So like, you know, this one is Indonesian. They mm. speak in Bahasa half the time. Yeah. And oh, wow. and uh, it's like, I want to service like all of us. Like, yeah. dude, you, the thing about like the Asian American representation, all that stuff is like, we get so focused on uh, like our own shit. Mm, true. Like, oh, it's just got to be Korean or Chinese or dude. If we start telling each other stories, you know how much more powerful we're will become if yeah. we respectfully do it and it, because it'll build understanding amongst us so when we we just become tighter man yeah yeah, yeah. no i agree yeah. just, you know don't eat korean fried chicken only get some jolly beef <laughs> <laughs> that's how you create allyship right yeah. there yeah man i mean that's but we always talk about how within the asian community there's so much separation yeah that's the east what, asian yeah yeah like because we always like bias and flexing yeah. and it's like this just, uh we're just trying to see who's number one korea <laughs> number one <laughs> that, that shit you know they always hit you with that yeah. um no i feel you man that film sounds amazing and oh dude it's it's yeah. beautiful y'all just wrapped up right we just wrapped i get like you know i fly back to hawaii today and then i start um i start editing it was funny actually because you know i have the same editor for all my films this came named reynolds barney he's a kid from hawaii that's actually his name reynolds yeah, yeah. barney i saw him at the premiere uh at blue bayou i was like motherfucker what are you doing here <laughs> <laughs> Who let you out of your fucking cave? God, <laughs> that's what I do with Alex. <laughs> and then he hits me with, "You should take acting classes." <laughs> Fuck! I didn't ask you that. I asked, "What are you, you doing?" About one night, and that's what he hits me. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you just started editing that. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's be and dude, I gotta say, man, Brian, 
he people are gonna be surprised i, I can see that he's 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 fucking talented man that yeah. dude is that dude is talented on so many levels but like i think this is going to show a different side of him that people don't even know exists oh it's gonna be sick yeah yeah, yeah. i'm stoked man i'm stoked yeah. and this is like is this this is a story that's completely conceived from you or yeah yeah, wow. yeah. i mean you know i spent a lot of time with brian um and you know i got to know him and i got to figure out like the things that are important to him mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, and then some of the stuff that's in the film, I kind of like, you know, um, co-opted from like his real life, but it's not, it's fictional. Got you. It's completely fictional so that he, there's a separation with him and the character because I don't want him playing himself. Got you. Yeah. Right. So how much, uh, like, do you leave room for like improvisation or like, uh, <clears throat> you know, so what's funny is a lot of my films feel improvised. Mm -hmm. But it's the rehearsal process because I always do yeah. it like a extensive rehearsal. So you know, during the rehearsals, I do a lot of these improv exercises, improv exercises, so they feel like free. Mm. But when we actually shoot, it's pretty close to the script. Yeah, you Because I, I was I was actually thinking about that when, um, like in the beginning scenes of the uh, Blue Bayou, when yeah. you're just hanging out with your daughter. Yeah, and just like you know, like when you're at the the Bayou. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So that scene, you know, most of it's scripted, but you know, you know how we're telling jokes to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was improvised. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, yeah, I was like, hey, tell me a joke, and I, you know, like what I do sometimes is I go, I yell like spaghetti, which means like just start rolling the camera, mm. so nobody kind of knows, and then oh. the actors start picking up, and I say ravioli, you know, like, but but, but, uh, but you know, you, you start rolling the camera, and then she doesn't even know we're rolling, and I go, hey, tell me a joke, tell me a joke, and she's like, what kind of joke? I'm like, whatever you want. So she starts telling jokes, and we start interacting, and it's yeah. like very honest and real. What's the, I, I'm curious about how the director when you're directing and acting in your own film as a lead works yeah uh, you know i've always i mean i'm curious for anybody who has that kind of situation but yeah. like how does that work for you so the truth of it all is um i come last right as a director mm. so like i'm directing when i'm on set i need the actors to feel comfortable and confident and know what they're doing and feel like i got my shit together because you know i'm working with alicia she's like expects nothing but the best right so my performance kind of is like an afterthought and because of that like i just prepare like crazy on both sides on the directing and acting side i make sure i try to take care of everything that's within my power so that on the day i'm you know focusing on anything that i was able to take care of has already been done uh and then of course you're going to get questions from <clears throat> wardrobe and you know the dp and all this stuff and that's it that's unavoidable but uh, it's all about preparation man yeah i hate to be the the parallel guy like trying to draw you know from me being a rapper but like you know we if we rehearse our lines and we get them perfect yeah we can go out on stage and then like do like little crowd work or like yeah notice some shit tear that yeah up, you know, yeah it's it. it is that it's the freedom <laughs> in preparation like yeah, yeah, the yeah. freedom in completely being prepared then it gives a room to be able to improvise yeah, yeah. and like stray a little bit because you know what the core is you know what the spine is yeah you get yeah. nervous when you're not prepared and that's yeah. it that yeah. muscle memory going yeah. yeah and your whole performance becomes about you trying to remember the line <laughs> yeah dude. you know and, and that's yeah. when disaster happens <laughs> <laughs> oh, um shit. so wait the pachinko joint um, which is a huge thing. That's that's yeah. like people been kind of seeing what that adaptation is gonna look like because the book's so damn popular. Yeah, I mean the book's beautiful. Yeah, and by the way, I auditioned for two parts in there. Um, I didn't get it, but uh, I auditioned. And nice. uh, and uh, you got a I, compilation I, of dumb and Alex parts and you didn't get. <laughs> 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 I would love to see that. Alex read those lines with me. Nice. Um, it was tough because I, I knew I couldn't get it because the Korean, re like rehearsing lines in Korean, I'm um, reciting lines in Korean is just. Yeah, different you have to have the language down yeah. yeah or you can't just you can't do it we yeah. tried we tried it didn't work out yeah. um uh but yeah what's that experience like because it's such a uh like a worldwide translated book that yeah. you kind of had to the production of it was pretty like complex because it was in english japanese and korean right so i'm directing people in three different like pe people are speaking three different languages luckily you know i can speak korean so like but like you know my korean's not like the best so sometimes they're like laughing at me because i'm like directing like is it, imagine if like a 10 year old was telling you what to do mm. yeah, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. like what <laughs> and they'd be laughing because of the way i said like you know the thing but but it was cool man because you know like i'm getting to work with like our people you know and and shooting in korea that was cool with the korean crew and 
and uh, you know um, you have a ja Japanese translator but you know I mean I've been acting for a while so you know what good is good mm. and you know like emotionally what feel like it's like it's working or whatever but we shot it in Korea and Vancouver and, and you know that's tough it's just like I don't think it's any harder than making indie film okay I just think it's just managerially you just have to manage a little more but in terms of the art form yeah it's a, it's the same thing so it's like you know you're, you're a rap dude and 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 you do a small show at a small venue yeah well it's still like you're rapping you say and then say you could do an arena got you yeah. it's the same thing it's just more things to like manage and make sure that's taken care of and you're like okay well I'm still rapping, but I got to make sure that the visuals are like at par with the the, the size. We're of talking the, about the 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 budget. The yeah. budget is huge. So, yeah. yeah. But in terms of like your vision, um, you just have a little bit more toys. But it's like your identity is still the same. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was thinking that because that that was like wasn't it some like historically big budgeted thing? Maybe for Apple, you know, like for Apple, it, yeah, 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 it might be one of their bigger budgets, and um, you know, ultimately, like it's a it's an important piece because it's, it's the first of its kind yeah it's like dude it's like an american company paying for this like japanese korean right like thing and and uh you know also like a lot of it's in like korean mm. you know so like you're gonna have these american audiences watching people just speak korean and what uh you know you've been so passionate about asian and asian american stories for so long same as same as a lot of us and we yeah. could implement it into our art yeah. like when did you make that decision? Like a lot of my art is going to be about that. It's when I decided to direct. Mm. So to be honest, this is how it happened, man. Is is uh, you know I made this first film called Man Up, and, and with uh, Kev Jamba, right? Yep. And I never thought I'd direct again because I'm like, this is way too hard, man. As an actor, I get to go to like my trailer and ask for you know a breakfast burrito and just chill. And yeah. Wait till they call me to set. But then I was on this one show, man, and this this white director who's been around for decades, was directing, and he was having trouble blocking the scene. You know, I just wanted to make a, a suggestion. So yeah. I just like, you know, try to talk, and he goes, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. What are you paid here to do? And I, I was like, what do you mean? <clears throat> and he's like, what are, you, what are you getting paid to do here? And I said, act? He said, exactly, so shut the fuck up and do as you're told. Wow. Wait, and, did he say that in front of people? Yes. Oh, fuck. I felt dumb as fuck. I felt dumb as fuck. And I was like, you know what, dude? Why does this guy get to do it? Why, like, this dude has, is supposed to know his shit, and like, why does he get to do it? Like, why does he have all the power and the keys to, to, you know, the the, the car and shit? Like, I'm yeah. like, I know I could do it better than this dude. Let's right. expose him. Yeah, they, but I was just like, you know what? Like, I got, I got to I got to take control and do my own stories and tell our stories, and not have this dude right. tell our stories. Like, you know. So uh, that was a turning point because I was like, "Fuck this! I'm gonna show him." But did you yeah. feel like you were, like he disrespected you, or did you kind of feel like you're right? I should just be in your role. You know what I mean? Like, Both. Yeah, yeah, Both. yeah. Because yeah. I, you know, I mean, you get the initial knee jerk reaction of like this motherfucker, right? Right. Yeah. And then after that dies down, you're like, "Well, what are you gonna do about it? You gonna like, this is me talking to myself? Like, right. you're gonna just complain about it?" Yeah. Or you're gonna do something. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna fucking do something. Nice. And that's when I was like, you know, I'm gonna just write and direct my own shit and and uh, you know, like you can't get like millions of dollars. Well fuck it. I'll do it for like hell a little, like for like a hundred grand instead of like a few million. Yeah. And then, you know, <clears throat> show people like what I what what <clears throat> I can do so that I get a little bit more trust each time. Yeah. Um, to, to get more money to do it and, and show that like we all have like our authentic voices, you know. What, what do you think your first film that after you f that's not going to be Asian centric going to be? <clears throat> It'll probably be themically Asian. Like you use like, you know, you know, a different race to like tell basically an Asian story. Mm. So it's like you don't even know it. It's more like seeping in subconsciously mm. that you have no idea that this is like the mentality of like an and like a Asian creator. Interesting. I think that's the way I want to go. Um, maybe it's, <clears throat> maybe it's aliens, bro. Could be aliens. Korean. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, why are these aliens eating noodles? What the fuck? <laughs> Space Dubu. <laughs> Space Dubu. Uh, Yo, uh, yeah. we're gonna take some questions from um, the people too. Yeah. Feel free to call in, throw in the Discord yeah. in there. Um, yeah, I, I gotta take a leak. Can they ask questions? No, go ahead. We're gonna, yeah, yeah, we're gonna take yeah. some calls. Um, 
This is your chance, Alex, to talk some shit right now. No, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's take some calls. We're gonna throw some um, the Discord link in here. Uh, we got Justin Chan, director, writer, and actor of the brand new movie Blue Bayou. Don't forget, guys, he was in Twilight. He was in Twilight as well. Let's not forget that. That <laughs> That's was his first claim to fame. Yeah, a lot of people recognize them as the Asian dude in Twilight. I like saying this well. Like, yeah, wait, Justin's away. Cause he's like, I'm an artist. Don't say Twilight. <laughs> no, but he was like, that shit blew him up. Cause Twilight was like a cult following <laughs> yeah. kind of joint. You know what I'm you saying? You guys, uh, you guys like the questions stuff we're asking. You guys learning a lot. Yeah, hit us up. I throw some questions inside the chat. If you can't call, we can uh, figure that out as well. Um, we could take a call. Let's take a call right now from uh, King Solanish. Right now from uh, King Solanish. Oh, you gotta, hey, you gotta turn, uh, mute your Twitch and just listen to us on Discord because there's a delay there. We just reminded people Yo, that you were in Twilight. Oh, there you go. What's up, Ken? <laughs> You're good. Yeah, hell's yeah. What's your question? Yeah. Um, it was just making me think when um you were talking about the Rich Brian in the new film and then how oh, you being a hip hop artist crossed over into movies before in film. What do you? Why do you think rappers are so good at crossing over? Or it even reminds you of like Space Jam and Michael Jordan, like. Pop culture icons. Why do they have such power in? in Wait, where the films? fuck are you from, dude? <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna come in here with an accent. He's bro? like, I'm King Solanish. <laughs> <Island." laughs> oh, try and guess. You guys. Have no, 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 no. You're, you're good. You're good. Wait, so, what was your question? Can I, you? I, I would just say Australia. <laughs> no. Nice. No. He's it's from the like UK. UK. He's from UK. the UK. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. What was uh, the question again? No, like he, said, he, he said, "Why is it? Why do you feel like so many like pop culture icons, like rappers, mm -mm. are so good at rapping? I mean, go, so good at acting, going into acting." I mean, because you got to have that persona, I would guess. I I don't know because I'm not a rapper, but like it seems like you have to every time you go on stage, you're good at dealing with pressure. Mm. You're you, you know you got to have this certain mindset when you step on and 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 exude mm -hmm. confidence and also like have a certain persona. Um, I mean, and when you're rapping, like you got to memorize, you know, like your lyrics and, you know, that's what I would think. I think the real question is, did you ever rap at all? Me? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad. I tried to freestyle in high school and everybody told me I was trash. So I was like, all right, that's that? not, that's not my, that's not my lane. It's definitely not my lane. Even the counselor was like, break it up. You're trash. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I mean, I feel that too. You know, like. Tupac was a great example oh, of a dude. fucking sick ass actor. Mm -hmm. He was scary at moments, man. Yeah, and Juicy, she was scary, yeah, bro. Yeah, fool was a scary yeah. man. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for calling, King. Appreciate it. Uh, let's go to Pete Easiest. Pete hey, Easy, what's good, bro? What's your question? Uh, my question is, uh, what are like the five uh, things you need as like a director? Or I mean, like, what you yeah, actually, yeah. What you need as a director, like on set for I'm you. I say like three things. <laughs> I mean, I'm mean, just saying. I mean, yeah. I guess you answer in however many things you need. I guess that you need in terms of to be to be effective. Uh, no, not effective, but like your personal need. Like, like oh. you want like you need like your teddy bear or like you need like a. <laughs> Your hype beast essentials. <laughs> <laughs> hype beast essentials. Director's edition. Uh, yeah, what's in your bag? I guess. Like, <laughs> oh shit. Uh, what do I need? I just need uh water. Um, you know. Uh, fuck. Uh, I mean, until like this May, I quit drinking this May, but I would always have some some alcohol. You know, to to you know. Towards... Has it been a big change for you on set? Like just. Not, uh, not drinking or yeah because i'm just a little more uptight you know before like <laughs> he said it in a negative way yeah i'm way more uptight now it fucking sucks <laughs> i thought it'd be like yeah i'm way more clear-headed <laughs> like no i'm a <laughs> oh man i love i love drinking so i don't know man um what do i need you know uh, just like some water uh i have this uh i have this uh camping chair that i take with me that's super low to the ground mm. and it's super okay, funny okay yeah it's super funny because you know the monitor is like really low because i'm so low so everybody yeah, yeah. has to like everybody has a knee <laughs> and shit you brought take, that stupid chair <laughs> exactly, exactly. everybody take a knee <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't need much man yeah well can i okay. ask real quick uh what made you stop drinking my daughter 
Mm. Yeah, my kid, you know, like, I think, like, I don't want her to see me drunk all the time. Yeah. You know, coming home late, and then, like, she's just, like, looking at me, and I'm just, like, you know, this is not a good look. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I've seen you drunk, though. You're, you're like, a happy, like, a smiley drunk. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I enjoy it. He used yeah. to be a crazy drunk. I've seen yeah. him some oh. drunk. <laughs> I, I've seen him at, like, at like Asian gala drunk. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you go to Asian gala, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, Justin's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, he's going to the podium. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I've done that. Like, that kind of shit. So, uh, Pedesius, thanks for calling. We got Just yeah, yeah. One Sa. Uh, Hello? What's up, Just One? Yo, what's up? What's on your mind, bro? Alright, bro. We gotta do the little game. I know my last name gives it up, but... What's up? Hello? Mind, oh, you gotta, would you like to... Oh, you gotta turn down your Twitch audio and just leave the Discord. Oh. Yeah, oh, mute, the tw mute the Twitch no, I audio. Have you, I, have you, I have you on a different screen. Hold on. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Um, well, I think what he's saying, Justin, we have this game on this podcast where. All right, I'm Korean. We'll get rid of it. We'll prefer you. Okay. Money. All right. You're, oh, you're, you're the one who said let's play right. this game. It's called, <laughs> it's called Minority Report, where we guess the ethnicity no, from just I their see. voice alone. But okay, just once yeah. uh, you're Korean, I wouldn't have guessed that actually. I don't know if he's not. Does he sound Korean to you, Rec? His name is Sa. Uh? <laughs> no, that's, that's a good. All right. His last name is Sa. All right. What's your question, bro? Um. Well, I'm proud that you like quit for your daughter because I quit for my son too. Nice. He's five, and you know my dockets are like inches thick, so you know I had yeah. to stop drinking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's a, the best reason to quit. You know, if I yeah. have a kid, for sure I'd still be drinking. Yeah. You know, but yeah. uh, the kid, you know, I just I don't want to <laughs> to grow up with that kind of. You know, we all grew up with that. Like True. you know, like yeah. so. Yeah. All so, yeah. Change that. You know, break father, the cycle. drunk father, blah yeah. blah blah. You know, we all dealt with that shit. Yeah. So, so if anyone's out is. there trying to quit drinking, have a kid. Yeah. yeah. That's what. Just he's have saying. a kid. That's what he's <laughs> that didn't work. That didn't work. I'm still drinking. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm, I'm bipolar, so whenever I drink, you know, I start. Ooh. I literally got a. I'm on house arrest right now. I got my ankle monitor on. Oh shit! Ooh, ooh. All right, love that. Yo, I think we're getting quite. Jackets? We're getting a little delay. Can you, you mute your ankle bracelet real quick? No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Yo, I was there. Mute the stream. I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> well, thanks for calling. Just for one. Calling, um, man. and yeah, hang in there, buddy. Oh, no, I have one more question. Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got one. You're good. How do I start my music career? Like, I have like <laughs> blah, 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 clearly blah. a question for Justin. <laughs> <laughs> How do you start your music career? Just start it. Or acting, or acting. How about acting? How do I get into acting? First of all, looks it doesn't sound like you're sure what the fuck you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, whatever. I mean, how do I I'll just get a I job? Get. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, it's like beauty supply. I don't need money. Like, I own a half of shit. I'm looking at Culver City for next location, or I don't know. Canada. No, you got to know what the fuck. These are things that people really try to do. You know what I'm saying? You can't. Dumb cries every night. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Dude, I literally just cried thinking about my grandma. You know what I mean? I put on one last cry by Brian McKnight on YouTube, and I was, I was crying. Like, All right, you get you got the part. <laughs> you got the part. You can cry to Brian McKnight. No, I mean, what are you passionate about? What do you like doing? Do you like oh, rapping? Music, music, music. Yo, I could I could freestyle on a beat. <laughs> All right, All right. Spit, spit a quick acapella. Eight bar acapella right now. We'll Go. give you two bars. Go. Bars? Alright, dummy gave me a couple of bars, but I'm not going to Mars to eat that chocolate sauce. I'm going up to space because Boston. Yeah, you should try acting, like actually. Because <laughs> <laughs> I act like a rapper because I don't know how to act. But I could put this Cali beat on real quick. As a matter of fact, it's uh, just called Butter Nuggets. <laughs> you will never know because you only like the chicken. But I'm put on a show just so someone will listen but then i can keep going <laughs> and i don't know if you're still there because it's quiet and muted over there so i can just unsave this little file and play something that might be a little rare okay all right, all right all right all right all right all right no definitely acting <laughs> definitely acting <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, just want to keep at, bro. You good, bro? We'll talk soon. All right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Right, peace. Uh, peace, brother. Yeah, uh, um, before you know, you mentioned your daughter, and Steffi popped in really quick. She asked, 
um, would you encourage your daughter if she wanted to act? Hell no. <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Why? It's a tough life, man. Mm. Yeah. Unless if you love it. Like, if she loves it, yeah. then yeah. Course, but but I want her to do it properly. I want her to get training. I want her to... Right. I want her to be, uh, you know, really focused on why she like. What's the purpose of it? Mm. Like, why do you want to do it? And and let's talk. Let's let's figure that out. But like, if it's just to be famous and yeah, you know, get notoriety, that's not a good enough reason. It's too hard of an industry. Mm. You know, I mean, if I went back and I had to, if I knew everything, I don't even know if I would have done it because it's it's such a hard road. Yeah, I, you, you know, know what? I think you brought up a good point. It's just. I think a lot of people don't even know why they want to do it yeah. or, or anything. Yeah. Not even just that. Like, people don't really know. Like, yeah. I think before mm -hmm. you even go into that, like, you know, the guy who just called or whatever, like, really think about it. Sit down with yourself and see if it's something you really want yeah. to do, you care about. Yeah. You might not even care about it. You don't even know. Yeah. And because, you know, what happens is that if you don't care about it enough and it's not something that's, like, you're super passionate about, God forbid you actually do get it. Mm. and you actually do become famous and you get all this stuff because when you get the, you're gonna feel so empty because you don't know why you're doing it that's mm. true that's true 100 percent. i feel that that's a good advice right there um we got affet affet a lot of callers today actually affet all right we could affet uh, affet <clears throat> Move on, it. <laughs> it, move on to the next one. Punished, <laughs> punished dart. <clears throat> punished dart. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dominatrix. What is this, dude? <clears throat> what up, punished? Hello, hello, dumb. Hello, Rex. Hello, Justin. Hello, hello. Where are you calling from? <laughs> calling is James from Lipton. <laughs> <laughs> James Lipton. <laughs> Actor Studio. Hello. David, David, dirty words. Uh, yeah, where are you calling from, bro? <laughs> Color from Minnesota. Oh, nice. Oh, you got that Minnesota mm -hmm. accent, actually, right? I, I don't really notice it, but I guess if it's there, it's there. <laughs> no, it's there, yeah, yeah. bro. It's fucking there. Uh, what's your question? Uh, my question is for uh, Justin, but I uh, love love you, Rec. Also, just so you know. <laughs> All right. Because <laughs> uh, like you're overcompensating. So, um... <laughs> Did you talk shit about me before? All right. Uh, for Justin, um. Uh, so I'm kind of doing a uh, screenwriting and all that and how do you draw from uh, you know your Asian American experience since almost it, it can be like almost the same so how do you uh, tread so it's at least your own experience and not like kind of almost like it's been done before oh like a Basically, general Asian avoid... experience oh I yeah. see that's actually I a see. pretty good avoid question general. actually yeah. that is a good question that's a really good question I like that yeah are you Hmong? yeah so you know, it's you gotta you gotta. Well, he's from Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was like, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but like, but like you gotta you it you know the there's, yeah. yeah. What I gotta say is is there's something so unique about your experience that nobody knows about yet. You know, mm -hmm. nobody knows what it's like to be Hmong and be relocated to Minnesota, St. Paul, or, or or Fresno, or any of those places where you guys are from. So that in itself is is super beautiful to see on screen now the question you have is like how do you make it unlike every other experience well mm -hmm. that needs to come from your truth right mm -hmm. it needs to come from somewhere that that is your truth and it needs to be very specific right so we've seen these films minari uh the farewell the reason why they're so beautiful is that that's our personal experience that is our personal experience and it comes from somewhere so real that it becomes un undeniable and in within that specificity it becomes a universal story mm -hmm. because everybody can see their humanity through your story because you know feeling unwanted feeling alienated having a mother and father these are all universal things like going mm -hmm. through a family death you know like all these things everybody knows how to how to relate with that it's just within the specificity of your particular story is what's going to make it beautiful and, and i agree with that and just to add on to that just certain scenes or dialogue makes it different yeah. or makes the person mm -hmm. different i yeah. noticed that you know you watch a film and you get the general gist of whatever it is like minari a lot of us grew up as with those <laughs> yeah. kind of parents right yeah. but it was like little lines just yeah. one line you know like the, the the white kid being like 
racist or something, saying a racist line afterwards, like, yeah. gonna go play at my house? <laughs> 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 like, that resonated with me, because it was just like, yeah, you've had these yeah. moments, and it, I like that they didn't just turn it into, oh, it's gonna just be like a yeah. racist kid being racist, and this you household know, you is bring racist. Up a, you bring up a really good point, though. Like, also, uh, let, the pe- like, let the pendulum swing, and what that means is, like, don't just make it so dark and so just heavy like bring some levity to it show like that's the the full spectrum of the human experience mm-hmm. because if you look at farewell and minari they're also funny as hell yeah mm-hmm. they're also funny like what how do you take you know like hardships and also laugh at that too and i think that's a, a good equalizer it's a good equalizer but those little lines that you're talking about yep. That's what made me connect. Yeah, the, the the penis line. Remember in Minari, the the grandma. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know this. You, you know you gotta you gotta kill him with some 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 comedy as well. But like, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. it's it's a hard question. But that's you know. That no, was great. There's like no. these honest and personal moments that you think you're the only one that has that experience. But then turns out you know a lot of people did. Like one moment that stands out for me. It's not a movie, but David Cho talks about hide like having like. When all his family is out of the house, he took out pa- p- pieces of porno and just scattered it on his bed. And he would jerk off and look at every little piece in his collection. And I thought I was the only one who did that. <laughs> <laughs> but that should be in a film. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that was pre- that was the original open tabs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have thirteen tabs open. <laughs> Before it was just pages scattered on the floor. Yeah. Like, but you like, did that too. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> when you're a teenage, we, we, this is pre-internet. I mean, yeah. all of us. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd have pages <laughs> from a magazine scattered on the floor. Like we were an editor at Vogue, just looking. At yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the season. Like, what will make the cover of Vogue? <laughs> Yeah, um, you hide him, hide yeah, him yeah. in a Bible. You know, thank you, Punish Bible. Dart. Uh, this, this, is, this is very enlightening. So, thank you, Justin. Thank you, Dumb. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, bro. Thanks for calling, you, man. Thank yeah, you. go tell your story, brother. All right, we got. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's, that's not cheesy. Sorry. <laughs> Shinshia, what's up? Shinshia, move on to the next one. Faj. Faj. Hey, what's up? Okay. Um, I was going to ask a question. To mute your stream. Mute the, the stream. Mute, mute the stream on the Twitch. We're getting a delay. Oh, hold on. Fix my audio real quick. Yep. It's like you got it. Are you guys hearing me? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, ask your gonna... question. Yeah. Uh, so my girlfriend, she's an aspiring director. Uh, she's kind of going to film school right now. She's a senior. Do you have any general advice for like an Asian director? Dude, tell your truth. Tell you truth, and also the biggest thing is get good at what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you know I get these questions all the time, and it's like just remember what what craft you're actually trying to 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 follow. You know, what is your discipline? Just be a good like, be an amazing director, because there's nothing that's gonna replace that. If you're not good, what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. So get good at your craft, and then you know the next thing is like tell your truth. Like what what is it you want to say to the to the world let me ask you what's what's <clears throat> some of the stuff that you did to prepare for your first film um because you didn't go to film school right? yeah i didn't go to film school so what was what was your process because so, you know, i don't want to go to film school yeah no, okay. yeah no no yeah no no and, and film school is only to give you confidence and have a toolbox right but if you can learn along the way why why would you spend money and, right, and right, do right. all that stuff the biggest illusion in this town is that the first time you hit that was actually your first project Right, so let's talk about Lee Isaac Chung, who did Minari. Dude, that dude has been around forever. Right, he right. had a film that went to Cannes. Like he's a legit ass dude. Um, it takes it just takes years and years and years of of a practice, man. And like for me, my personal thing is, I was acting, so I was on so many sets. So I got to watch all these different directors and watch their style. And I was an annoying kid on set, being like, "Hey, what's that do? Mm. What does this do? Can I touch that?" And then people will be like, get the fuck away from me. But like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, like I use those opportunities to, to be exposed. And then it was like, people don't know about like the, 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 the shitload of shorts I made. I made so many shorts right. that, that is in a DVD binder. No one will ever see them. And I was just practicing. Uh, but I'm like, I'm not ready yet. I can't, I can't even put this on YouTube. It's embarrassing. You know, so it's, it's just about practice, man. Right. It's getting the reps in. It's like, dude, you know, as a rapper, like, it's put how much time did you put in 
That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. I, I just want to like piggyback off that. It's like, just be honest with yourself too. Like there's times when, you know, I play songs for my friends and yeah. then like, I, I could tell that their reaction, they're not that interested in the song. Yeah. Then I'm like, all right, I'm going to just leave that on the table. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. that feedback loop. Yeah. Mm. Just like, yeah. and I know, like if you don't know and you're just lying to yourself, you'd be like, ah, they, you know, they don't know. Yeah. Like they don't know what they're talking about. I'm just, yeah. Oh, you, know? you don't want to get into that trap. Yeah. 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 I'm the genius. Everybody else is stupid. <laughs> yeah. Trap. Nah, that's, yeah, that's the worst. Uh, yo, Thaj, thanks for calling. We got Chris on the line. What's up, Chris? A lot of calls. People really want to ask Justin questions on this one. This one's good. Yeah. This one's good. All right, move on to the next one if we can't get in the next three seconds. Uh, hello. Oh, oh. oh, there you go. Hey, what's up? Uh, uh, I have a question for Justin. Go ahead. Uh, is there like an echo? Oh. What do you say? Oh, yeah, so, well, what inspired you from becoming from from starting from a YouTuber to become an actual actor? So I was acting before YouTube. I started acting in 2000, around 2001. And in about 2008, I started all, seeing all these Asian people dominating YouTube. Um, so I just wanted to see what it was about. Yeah. You know, I wanted to learn. And then when one more thing, are you, are you still in touch with Kevin, Kev Gumbo? You know, we texted back and forth on his birthday. His birthday was in yeah, so June. I'm, he, became a, he became a gamer streamer on Twitch. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I heard. Um, you know, he, he, you know, he's been on his own journey. I'm really happy for him. He's, you know, he's finding like his, what he wants, what makes him, him, him happy. But, um, you know, we texted back and forth on his birthday and, uh, you know, I wish him nothing but love and, and, and happiness. Yeah, you guys were the OGs of the YouTubers back then. The OGs. You still keep in touch, do you keep in touch with Robert Pattinson at all? No. Nah. <laughs> that dude, that dude's like in the stratosphere, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But you know, I'm guys like, are, is there like a Twilight bumping. group chat? Like a, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Twilight is having like a res resurgence in like this new Gen Z thing. Oh, you think so? Yeah, there's like, right, Alex. Hold on, let's talk to someone who's like the Gen Z spokesperson. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially on TikTok, people are like recreating the scenes and just uh, you know, in the whole lore of, of all that. Yeah, it's Twilight. You know, indoors. Uh. Uh. Well, yeah, well, shit, man. But, yeah, we have Alex researching Gen Z material all day. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay, thanks for calling, Chris. Let's talk to Nitsuj. We're gonna take about like four more calls. We'll call it a wrap because uh, Justin got to head out. Yeah. Yo, hello. What's up? Yo, I just wanna say like wreck and dumb. I fuck with y'all. I fuck with the song you guys put out together, Mardo on there. Oh, let's thank go, you, bro. baby. I love that song. Yeah. I fucked with it heavy. Um, my parents, they be, uh, they actually listened to it one time. They thought it was hilarious. Oh, that's what's up. Okay. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, play, play my song, uh, play our song, My Dawn there for your parents, everybody. Mm. Yeah, for real. Play it right now. Get the streams up. You know how it <laughs> Oh, it's Chusuck too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, happy shit. Oh, I forgot. For happy Chusuck. Yeah, happy Chusuck. Yeah, happy happy Chusuck Duck for everybody. All right. Yeah. Uh, what's your question? Damn, uh, nah, I just really just want to say I fuck with that song, but, nice. um, for Justin, I guess I got to make a question, huh? Uh, you don't have to. He's sweating bricks <laughs> right now. All I got to say What's is, your color? I, I watched your YouTube, like, maybe back in high school, so that was, like, 10 years ago, but yeah. you look the same. Oh, thank you. Like, you look the same Dude, me. it's quitting that drinking, man. Mm. Nah, he's like, he's like yeah. young forever, though. Yeah. Yeah, young forever type of thing. He got the blessed Korean jeans for real. Yeah. It's cool, like in his 30s doing young adult shows <laughs> yeah. and shit and movies <laughs> and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I guess I want to ask, like, dumb, like, how long are you going to be growing your hair out? Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I was going to ask dumb, why do you look so old? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you know where he brought that up. So I don't want you motherfucker. When I first met him, I thought he was older than me, for sure. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, Dumb, Dumb is not your young? No, he's not my young. We're, we're the same oh. age. Oh, you guys are the same age? All right, Alex, hang up on this guy right here real quick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just going my hair. I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I have no answer for good, that. Man. Thank you. Look more uh, like an actor. I'm going to go through. 
<laughs> yeah, it looks fresh, man. I be looking at your Instagram story. You try to be motivational to the people with your, you know, you flexing your little biceps here and there. I, see <laughs> uh, I can't tell if you're like giving me props or shitting on me. <laughs> your little fucking biceps here and there. Your fucking biceps, doing little workouts and shit. I see you with a rep. <laughs> uh, thanks, thank you, bro. Thanks for calling, yeah. man. Peace. All right. Man. All right. God bless you. <laughs> Turtle Duck. This is the last call we can take. What's up, Turtle Duck? You're on the air. Yo, what's up, guys? What's up, brother? What up, Turtle Duck? Yo, um, I got a, a question for, for Justin. Go ahead. So, um, I'm like dying to see Blue Bayou, um, specifically because I'm a doctor recipient. So, like, oh. being a doctor and like, yeah. although, like, I can't really relate to the movie um, through the whole like adoptee um, storyline. Yeah, uh, I, I pretty much like grew up in the states like my entire life, so it's like, you know, if I were to be deported and go back, like I wouldn't even fit in, you know, back in my own country. So it's yeah. it's, it's kind of weird. Um, but oh, sorry, that wasn't my question. Uh, my question was, um, uh, if you've ever experienced uh, imposter syndrome, and if so, like how do you overcome that? Oh man. Mm -hmm. All day, every day. That's a lot of us. Yeah, <laughs> every of us. film. Yeah, every film, every part. You know that idea that you're not good enough, mm -hmm. and what am I doing? I, you know the idea that people are going to expose you, and that's a con that's a real fear. Yeah. Um, what can you do though? Like I, I always think about like what is the things within your control, and for me, <laughs> it's just to get better. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. to keep working, just to just keep putting things out and and putting yourself out there and being okay with failing, you know, and then and then you know trying to just get better. I mean, there's nothing else you can do, but you'll never. Then I don't think that ever goes away. I, I don't think you can. You definitely cannot let that allow to take take over you. You know, yeah. um, especially in a director position where you are hired to be the person who's so confident in their decisions. Yeah. If you let that imposter syndrome get to you, oh my God, that'll be the end. <clears throat> yeah. I think the cure for imposter syndrome is to like, just not care. Yeah. And I think that like, at least people on this table, like we care about our shit. Like, you know what I like to do when I kind of suffer uh, imposter syndrome? I like to replay like my highlight reels of things I've accomplished mm. in the past. Cause it reminds me like yeah. I've done it before. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can run yeah. it back. Like yeah. that's, that, that's, that's what, what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Get the lube out. Like, no, <laughs> no, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like you remind yourself that you can do it yeah. cause you've done it before. Yeah. Facts, facts. That's what yeah. I like to do. Okay. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I just don't have any highlight reels. So I couldn't, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got highlight reels. Shut up. Uh, yo, Turtle Duck, thanks for calling, man. We're going to wrap it up over here. Uh, Blue Bayou, out in theaters right now. Go yeah. support. Absolutely amazing. It was amazing, We were man. fully depressed after this show. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that before until that movie. It was. We were fully. We, we were, we, like, it was intense. Yeah. It was intense. We definitely looked at each other like, the son of a bitch did it. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. yeah, highly recommend it. Um, it's just what so it's it's out in theaters everywhere right it's now. It's out right? in theaters now. It's going to be out in theaters for a few weeks. And then I don't know what the digital release sort of plan is yet, but like so try to catch it in the theaters. Also, you know the other thing is I shot it for anybody who cares. I shot it on 16 millimeter actual film. Mm. Wow. So the way to see it is on a big screen because you know on a small screen you're not going to get all the film grain and all yep. that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely recommend seeing it in the in the theater cuz like yeah, like like you said, even in the beginning, right, where you're like, you got to deal with it. Yeah. I feel like when you're in a the theater, like you can't even like get up, for, yeah. you know, and just pause the film. Yeah. Like you got to just really just take it in. And, and audio, too. You know, yeah, the yeah, theater yeah. just hits different. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. also this new film uh, with Rich Brian as the lead. What is what is it called? It's called Jamu Jaya. That's the name of a Indonesian folktale. Okay, Jamu Jaya. And that, I'm, I'm assuming like next year for that. Yeah, probably around, <laughs> hopefully around this time next year. Wow. Wow. Looking yeah. forward to that, guys. Uh, Justin Chan. Thank you. Someone we all look up to in Thank our you. friend circle as, as a go getter. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. We Thanks love you, brother. Me. Tune in next week for another episode of Fun with Dumb. Peace. Here.